part of a high performance wall assembly as either a vapor retarder or as part of an air barrier system. For them to work though, they must be installed carefully. The first step of installation is carrying the roll to the room and then rolling it out. Ben cuts the sheet with scissors. I tuck myself so I'm a couple inches into my corner here, so it's leaving me a couple inches like this, so yep. a couple inches down there, and then I'm using this plate line right here as my reference point. Begin in one corner, staple the heck out of that corner, and then stretch the sheet to the other end of the room. He keeps the first edge even with the line between the top plates as a guide. He also staples up into the drywall backing in the ceiling. With the first edge secured, they stretch the sheet across the room and pull it tight to the frame. When the sheet is up, Rick staples the field into the ceiling framing. They fill in the additional strips needed to cover the ceiling, overlapping the edges onto framing, which will give solid backing for tape. Finally, they trim the edges of any long ends so they can tape the edges to the frame. Ben uses six foot lengths of tape rather than rolling it out in a continuous piece. Instead of having to try and move my ladder and juggle the tape at the same time, I pull off a length that's my arm span. And here's a tip for taping tight corners. I like to cut a little piece about three or four inches. I take and stick it over my squeegee like this. So it's up past the top of the squeegee a little bit. Just tuck it right into my inside corners. Squeegee it over. Most of these flashing tapes are pressure sensitive, so they require rolling or some other way to mash the adhesive into the substrate. To tape seams to the ceiling, he uses his squeegee placement tip again to get the strip started. And he rolls tape along the seam to the end. And he squeegees his way back. With the ceiling stapled and taped, you're going to turn to the walls tomorrow morning.